What's up everyone? John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here with a full review for you of the HTC Status or the Facebook phone, also called the HTC Cha Cha Abroad. Let's go ahead and see if this QWERTY packing little guy can dance its way into your heart. And yes, it took me a while to come up with that intro. All right, so let me remind you of the specs of this guy here. It's got a 2.6 inch diagonal capacitive touchscreen with a resolution of 480 by 800. It's being powered by 800 megahertz Qualcomm built processor. It's got 512 megabytes of RAM and ROM. On the back, it's got a five megapixel camera with autofocus and LED flash. Uh, it's running Android 2.3 and has a 1250 milliamp hour battery, which we'll talk about quite a bit. All right, so when I do my phone reviews, the first thing that I talk about is call quality. I've actually been using this as my dedicated only phone uh, for the past two and a half weeks, so I've made many more phone calls than usually my 20 call tests. Uh, it's actually been pretty solid. Uh, I've only had in the two weeks two dropped calls, and that was while I was driving through a known AT&T dead area. Other than that, call quality has been outstanding. Speakerphone volume was a little bit tinny, but quite loud. And HTC included one of their neat features that if you take your phone, you flip it over while you're on a call, gonna automatically convert over to speakerphone. Kind of neat. Uh, and speakerphone is pretty decent on here. So if you rely heavily on a speakerphone, uh, this is going to be a pretty good choice for you. I didn't have any white noise on my end and the callers didn't report any white noise on their end. So thumbs up for call quality. All right, let's go ahead and talk. Let's just get it out in the open. The big white elephant in the room is this guy right here, the Facebook button. So you probably ask, what does that do? Does it just take you to Facebook? Well, it does a couple things. Let me show you. So I'm going to go ahead and push it right now just while I'm on the home screen. And it's going to launch my, well, pretty much launch my wall. Let me update my status quickly and easily, hence the name HTC Status. This is probably the most appropriately named phone out there. And go ahead and select the camera if you want to take a picture or if you want to take photos. So let me go ahead and show you something interesting here. I'm signed in on Facebook. Let me go ahead and try and type a status update. So I'll go ahead and type hi. So there it is, typed hi. I'm gonna go ahead and hit post, and it's going to go ahead and do its posing thing. So now when I go to Facebook, I should see that post right on my wall, shouldn't I? Well, you'd think so. But here's my Facebook, and it is not there. That Facebook button doesn't work for me. Uh, and I am signed in with Facebook. All the steps and procedures were done and followed. Uh, perhaps you'll have better luck. Maybe just a problem with my review unit. But that guy doesn't work. If I go to the Facebook app and I update my wall or upload, upload a picture, works no problem. But this button, however, does not work. Uh, if you want to take a picture, or you are taking a picture, or if you have anything on the screen here that is uploadable to Facebook, that button is going to glow. If you can see it, there it is. See, it was glowing. Uh, since you take a picture, it lets you know that it can be uploaded. And in theory, when you hit that button, it'll take that picture you just took and it will automatically upload it to Facebook. At least that's the theory, it doesn't work. And even here, I'm gonna go ahead and upload a picture, so we'll go ahead and hit done. I wanna upload that to my photos. It's not going to work. So this button here, it's really just for decoration. Uh, it's not really decorating much, something to sort of keep in mind. Uh, certainly it's probably unique to this device, but yeah, thumbs down on that guy not working. Um, all right, so we've gotten past that Facebook button. Let's talk about this keyboard. I'm on a bit of a physical keyboard fix over the past couple of months. I've been using Blackberries uh, and now the HTC Status. And I've tested a lot of phones over the past probably about two and a half, three years. I've had my hands on pretty much every phone that's come out, whether it has a physical keyboard or doesn't have a physical keyboard, uh, I've tested it. And out of all the phones I've tested over that period of time, two phones stand out to me as having the best, most usable, physical QWERTY keyboards. One is the Sidekick 4G for T-Mobile, and number two is the HTC Status. This keyboard is amazing and an absolute pleasure to use. The keys have a little bit of raise to them. They're oval in design, have really nice tactile feedback. If you ever felt the need to have a physical QWERTY keyboard, you're going to be hard pressed to find one better, and that's out of all the phones I've ever tested in HTC Status. It is absolutely unbelievable. So this sort of begs the question, okay, the Facebook button doesn't work, Who's this phone gonna be good for? Uh, this phone has been wonderful for me and I do a lot of emails. If you need to peck out a ton of emails and Blackberry is not your thing, you want the flexibility of Android. This is surprisingly a, uh, <laughs> very subtly, a business friendly tool. Uh, it works extremely well. You might wanna cover up that Facebook button with a piece of tape so you're not embarrassed in meetings. Uh, but the keyboard here is really outstanding. Uh, something sort of to keep in mind. Um, I've loved using this. I've been a pleasure using it. 
uh, and I plan to continue to use this for a little while. Uh, and I'll talk about why it's not going to be my daily phone in just a little bit. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about navigation here. So it is a touch screen, so all your navigation is done with a touch screen. However, there are four buttons here for navigation. It's become a bit cumbersome to use. These buttons, however, are extremely small and not the most user friendly. So I wasn't doing any navigation here uh, with those four way buttons. Uh, on a phone that has a screen this small, flicking and scrolling can be a little bit difficult. Look at something here like a Blackberry certainly would be a competitor. You've got this optical trackpad and some Android phones have had this. I would have loved to have had another way to navigate this phone. Oftentimes wish that I had that trackpad in the middle. Uh, it's certainly usable and it's not unusable, but on a phone this small, pinching and zooming, sometimes your thumb hits the edge here, hits those capacitor buttons and doesn't always register. Something to keep in mind if you got big fingers, you might want to try this phone before you buy it. Uh, so there's a lot of custom stuff that go into the making HTC Sense work on a screen this small. Uh, so this isn't the newest version of HTC Sense. It's not 3.0, but it has some 3.0-ish stuff. I think look at this lock screen. Looks very familiar, right? Go ahead and set whatever icons you want. You can drag it right in and launch the applications. I'll go ahead and just unlock it here. Uh, so you do have sort of that style tweaks applications. Uh, are redone, and you've got these menus here that show up on the right-hand side. And that's true throughout all the applications here, menus or uh, mail, you get sort of a three-way uh, buttons there across the side. Uh, it's very nicely done, but it does take away from the screen real estate uh, when you're looking at it horizontally. Uh, this is being powered by 800 megahertz Qualcomm processor, and I would have loved to have shown you what the Quadrant score was, but unfortunately, Quadrant kept crashing whenever I tried to use it, so I don't know what the score is gonna be. Uh, but I will say the phone felt very quick while I was using it. Uh, pinching to zooming was very smooth um, and really no issues with opening applications. So I'm going to go ahead and open one, for example. This will tie very nicely into what I want to say next. Let's go ahead and open up something like Speed Test, which is going to test my internet speed. Look how it opens up in a weird orientation. Uh, clearly not meant for phone designs like this. You got to turn it to the side. And oftentimes that's what I found with a lot of applications is it's not meant for this uh, portrait orientation. So you're going to have to... Hold your phone like this, which is a bit awkward, especially if you're playing a game or something that needs the screen. So bear that in mind as well. All right, so let me go and open a few applications here and I'll show you what the speed looks like. Uh, let's go ahead and try something like, where's, I got Angry Birds on here somewhere. It's always a good test subject. Let's go ahead and see if I can find it. Angry Birds, Angry Birds. If you were an Angry Bird, where would you be? I see you guys probably screaming at me. There it is, Angry Birds. Let's go ahead and open it up. So it's not a speed demon, certainly not a dual core or even quad core coming out soon, or not even a full gigahertz power processor, uh, but it's pretty quick. And if you're just sort of doing everyday things, I really had no slowdown. I haven't had to do any program management. I have no task killer on here other than what's, whew, other than, go ahead and shut that down. Here a lot of the speakers are. Other than what was installed, um, come standard with gingerbread. Uh, it's worked actually very nicely. So let me go ahead and pull this aside for just a second. Let me go and open up a web browser and let me show you uh, what a website looks like. So we'll go ahead and launch Techno Buffalo. Let me show you what the pinch to zoom looks like. Uh, pretty fluid as you'd expect from a modern Android device. Um, but again, the small screen, something you're gonna have to experience for yourself. Uh, you can't see the text though on the 480 by 800 screen. It's pretty sharp. You can definitely read websites on here. Certainly wouldn't read an ebook, um, but you could. So scrolling's pretty smooth, still loading even. I'm not having any bit of that checkerboarding pattern. Uh, I have flash turned off. I've got it set to turn on if I want to. Go ahead and pinch to zoom. Uh, it's pretty smooth. This is actually a pretty nice, really nice implementation here of the Android browser. Uh, so if you can deal with that small screen or if you're used to maybe a Blackberry, uh, this is gonna be a very welcome addition. So I'll go ahead and close that. Uh, the weird orientation thing is something to keep in mind. Uh, if you are gonna use this phone for email, if you're gonna play some games on it, maybe make some phone calls, you're going to want to bring another battery. This guy's 1,250 milliamp hour battery is abysmal. It barely, barely gets me through three quarters of a day. Take the phone off the charger around eight o'clock. I've got two email accounts pulling an email about every 15 or 30 minutes, uh, depending on the account. Probably about two to three hours of phone calls and some light web browsing. And I am dead, dead as a doornail down to zero percent um, by about five o'clock. You can see it right now, it's 144. And I've already gone through about 40% of my battery. Certainly some of that has been for testing, uh, but you can see how quickly this thing is going to go. Uh, this is a phone that surprisingly I really wanted to like. 
Uh, I wanted to have a full QWERTY keyboard. I liked that I had Android on here, and I liked that I sort of had that BlackBerry feel, but the functionality of Android and certainly uh, the app choice that Android provides. Uh, if this thing had a better battery or had better battery management or had a bigger battery in there, I could wholeheartedly recommend this phone. Um, it's thin, it's got a sort of a unique form factor that's arched, it feels nicely in the hand, fits great in the pocket, it's got decent call quality, and all around very well-rounded phone. But I just can't use it every day without having to plug it in. When I'm sitting at my desk, I have to plug it in. Um, because of that, I just can't wholeheartedly recommend it to the business user or the heavy texter or internet browsing folks. Uh, unless you have a charger with you, uh, you may want to pick up another battery or look at some sort of external option here or some sort of external battery charger. If you're willing to deal with the bad battery life, this phone definitely gets a huge thumbs up. But if you're on the road, you don't have access to a charger, you're going to want to look elsewhere. Hopefully, you guys, this answered some of your questions about the HTC status. Not sure what's going on with that Facebook button. I'm John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo, and I'll see you in the next video.